trying to clean the tracks. You see, it's very tight. It's a huge towing company, and they uh, basically they have they have a paint shop here, and this uh, machinery trader who actually sold this to Canada, they didn't have uh, time to to uh, paint this, so they sent this big excavator to uh, to these guys because they do a lot of restoration you see they do body work like they have a huge body shop in here see there's an engine over there there's, there's a pita build with no engine i think that's engine is probably from the truck that petroleum truck they have cabs all over the place they have like 50 tow trucks in here this is just crazy Just about to leave maybe in half an hour I'm gonna leave this huge huge towing yard like these guys own like pretty much the entire block they have like five gates you can enter I never saw such a big towing company and that truck over that they had to move it was parked in the corner um, getting out of here will be tight because I'm so long right um, but 
Well, let me just grab some some water here. I had two jugs of water, but well, I waited to enter the premises, so to speak. I stopped on the street, and the entire sidewalk, just a little bit away from this towing yard, the entire sidewalk had people sleeping on it. Sitting, sleeping, walking, basically, I don't know, maybe 10, 20 bumps, you know? And I stopped because I wasn't sure which gate to go to and this guy is lying like half lying and he can hardly move I guess he's either drunk or just sick or something but he's lying on the mattress on the sidewalk is looking at me of course as usual they're looking for some spare change and he's brushing his teeth just with a toothpaste he doesn't have any water, he just lies like semi-reclining towards the fence and he's brushing his teeth like with very slow, methodical um, movements and then I see he finished and he just wiped his mouth with some dirty cloth have you ever tried to clean your teeth with the uh, like that with a toothpaste with no water it stinks right <laughs> so I felt sorry for the guy and I see he doesn't have any water right and I had full jug full jug like one gallon I bought this morning and then I had the jug from the day before uh, of course I drank from it but I don't think that would concern that guy so I didn't want to give him the new jug so I just give him half I went over and I said, Do you, you want water? He looks at me, spare change? I said, no. So I just left him water and he was looking at the label for a long time, probably trying to decide if I want to poison him or something. And then I left, but... Man. It was very, very sad. Kind of like make you think about appreciating life, you know? So yeah, this jug I just bought this morning at uh, Petrol. So let's finish. Let's finish chaining. I know some of you guys they're like kind of like they have this masochistic desire to see chaining in. Watch this corner here. Thirty-two celsius i'm guessing you can look it up on the on the web plus 32 celsius i think it's close it's like 85 90 degrees all right so these guys i think they're gonna kick me out pretty soon out of here or ask me to move or anything or something but while i'm gonna be chaining i also i'll tell you what's been going on because we had some issues with the with the with the permits. All right, where did I leave my gloves here? Because I got those gloves over there, but they're very dirty. They're covered in oil, and then I always end up. Oh, here we go. And so, my regular agent disappeared. The one that I I worked with. For the past five years at this permit broker i sent an email the email gets returned the recipient not found and so of course i knew right away that something is off you know like the recipient not found it's the same address i used for the past five years it was a nice lady i, I don't know maybe i don't know i never saw her i only talked to her on the phone Maybe she retired or something, I don't know, but she never... I wish she would send me an email or something saying, hey, I'm, I'm leaving, I'm leaving this company, so your, your agent from now on will be this one, you know? No, 
nobody said anything so I call him this I call him this morning hey what's going on where the where's uh, Carrie Ann and I said she's no longer here can I help you I'm like okay I'm just checking to see if you received my permit application yeah we received it what can we do for you I said not nothing that's it <laughs> they were very rushed you know and then this morning the same lady calls me and of course as soon as you leave your phone inside the truck did you notice that you step out I don't want to carry my phone with me because I already broke one screen like that because you drop them and I dropped the phone and it fell on the gravel crack the screen so, so I always try to leave the phone in my truck and so I go back in the truck to check on my phone I see there's a missed call and I recognize the area code as Iowa and that's where my brokers And I, uh, I checked, I checked the, the height, the height was uh, under 14, but I still put, I like doing that. I don't know if you can see, but I pushed the rubber hoses down and I hooked up a bungee cord on each side. So she calls me. And she says, we got a problem with Oregon. She says, uh, you never, you're not even registered with them. And she says, Oregon is not part of the, it's not part of the IFTA. So there's a fee. So basically she says, I need your cap card. And, and that's it. And I'm like, okay, that's not a problem except that my cap card expired on the last day of September so now I carry with me a, a extension expiry extension letter yeah I did it like this because now I don't have to tie down that board you know otherwise I have to tie it down and I put some pieces of rubber under it and let's see it seems solid and this sucker it was hitting this on the other side hitting this so we put a rubber in there but the guy didn't want to do it I said hey it's too big because I was I was afraid I would be over height you know because my permit is 14 one I said what's going on I never saw a bucket like this where the teeth are not touching the the boom but it's touching here and he says oh it's because it's an oversized bucket it's a quick release quick release bucket and it's bigger than usual and of course check this out I asked him I said guys you know anything about bacterial contamination and they said well we washed it three times and it says this is just concrete and I hope they let me in like this but it's clearly it's not dirt it just but I see some pieces of old trees in here <laughs> but there is some dirt but mostly it's just it just rocks you know and they kind of like solidified but you know if I ran into a bad bad um, in the officer in a bad mood 
they might say, hey, you need to go back to US and wash it. All right, so this excavator has eyes on the frame, but only two in the front, two in the back. Of course, that's not enough for for 80,000 pound machine. All right, let me see if I have any any rubber somewhere. Because I don't like it when chains When chains touch each other. Tear it apart. Oh. So I'm going to use one here because here chains will be touching as well. Yeah, this was super tight. Entering here, and there were big uh, concrete. Kind of like a pole lying on the ground marking the edge and of course it has rebar inside and the side is all broken and that rebar at the end just sticks out and I came out because I saw that I'm gonna hit it and I saw that if I keep going my tires will go right into that two rebar pieces sticking out like exactly that way huh so I need to take my my outrigger boards and just lie them to make it level so that the ties can go on the boards and then over over the that stupid rebar And so yeah, so uh, one thing about the about the permits is that there's uh, I cannot I cannot go like I went last time. Like I thought I would be just going on uh, 93 <laughs> all the way to Idaho. Not so fast, they said, because there's a. Uh, glorious little town of Eli ELY Nevada and they said that town is restricted to 12, 12 feet wide which is not a problem but the length is 100 feet, maximum length, and I'm 107. So the the agent who called me about this from the permit broker, she says, you want to give me a different route? And I said, you guys have all this equipment, right? Probably some maps, some tracking routes. And she's like, I don't know why you say that, but okay, I'll find you around. Just don't say you don't like it. I said, okay, I'll trust you. And so she gives me a route, like I'm here in Las Vegas, right? This is this is I-15. If I were to go northeast on I-15, there's 93 
goes pretty much straight north like with a, with a few curves and 15 goes like this towards california right so this las vegas so now they're sending me a couple of exits down on 15 and then there's 95 in here 95 and then i take a couple of rows like this and then i take highway 6 highway 50 basically i'm going back east and then at the very end i jump on 90 so let's say this is the last highway I take uh, i mean 90 80 i jump on 80 and i drive 70 miles east to wells nevada where I, I i sat with the last load i know that i know they have lots of parking there basically that's 93 so she's sending me like this to catch 93 and i said you know i'm going here right i don't need to be here like maybe we can find a road but in the morning i checked she already she already issued uh she already issued uh idaho right for that route with um 93 so i'm supposed to enter idaho on 93 and so i said you know what last time i remember um idaho took like four days for some reason but that's when i had that big drill rig which was uh 115 000 pounds So maybe it's because of the weight, but it took a very long time. I remember I was sitting there forever. And um, so I said, you know what? Please disregard my email else I send you. Um, because I don't wanna sit, sit and wait for the new, new permit. Oh, cool. It's not gonna touch the... the cross member and so now yeah I'm, I'll be going like this the good news for you guys is that I'll be going in some crazy local roads like you know not the US highway but I'll be going on some on some uh, three digit highways I don't like those so this will be this will be the last main chain right so we have two in the back two in the front one in the bucket so that's the that's a very good foundation and then I'll just do my typical thing and put put uh, chains on the tracks I don't have a choice
getting ready to leave just finished chaining let me see I think I as usual I will have like 20 calls and emails no wow interesting nobody likes me that's not good so now what I wanted to do is um, like remember those two chains on the body uh, front and rear I just don't trust these hooks over here you know in case they start coming loose just want to tie them down like this using using these fancy schmancy cables You see, like, I don't like this because it's, it's going to tear up the flag. If I put it here, it's going to be rubbing against this. Yeah, I think that should work. The more the merrier. Yeah, and then these ones. <laughs> and then when you delivering these cables there. Pretty easy. So I'm gonna be like a Christmas tree. Because I like to use these on the back. They're much more visible. are on yeah that's which should be in the up position that's good but yeah man again I'll have to grab a crowbar and because uh, you see yeah it's dry but it's it's not dirt but it's still coming off man yeah, eternal problem with these machines but the guy says I and I trust him he says we, we wash it and I see, well, I don't see actually much, much in terms of water, but like here it was all covered, man. Now this side is okay, so I'll just grab a crowbar and, uh, okay, so I got flags, I turn the mirrors, check. I tie down the hoses at the top, check. I turn the mirror on the opposite side. I have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I have eight chains and then one across the boom. And I did this. I added two more binders in the back. I couldn't do them in the front because I got my, I should have put in, I should have moved this this way, but it was too late when we started you know, positioning the excavator. Uh, okay, my uh, 
safety pin is in jeep suspension is up everything is connected truck air is up and i got all my permits with the lift axle with the lift axle uh, down because that's required in idaho and i think washington they have the same rule kind of like michigan right if you whatever axles you have they should be down when you're over when you're over um, the legal limit and i program my next stop 190 kilometers away some kind of a small small truck stop and i see like as soon as you touch something and i changed to shorts on a t-shirt with short sleeves was before i had a long sleeve t-shirt because wait look at this because it's too hot in here no, I'm okay. All right. Yeah, guys. You should have seen what just happened. Two hours. I spent two hours uh, trying to get out of the towing yard. <laughs> like, I had trouble getting in with eight axles, right? And so now I have the Jeep. I have the stinger, I'm 107 feet long, and over here, you see you have a sidewalk, right? And the road is uh, wider, it gets narrow, it's pretty, it's more narrow uh, at, the, at the entrance over there, and they have a gate with a rolling, like a rolling gate, and there's a pole, and here, this fence is right on the curb, like you have no room whatsoever. Like, if I could go on the sidewalk, like here, like if that gate was here, I would make it, but... And then the owner, the owner starts, starts screaming at me, you know, like, why did you, do, why did you load like this? Have you checked, uh, have you checked the exit? So basically, it's my fault. Uh, wait a second, you're shipping a 95,000 pound excavator. It's my fault that uh, I got stuck, right? I said, yeah, I checked it, but I checked all the way to the gate but i didn't look at the gate because it's like you know one mile away and i was busy working right so why are you calling a truck when you freaking you have like one square foot of space and this guy says yeah we should have loaded you on the on the road like how how are you gonna drive an excavator on the pavement on the city street are you nuts you cannot do that right because it has tracks and but the guy who uh, who was shouting at me he's the owner of the towing company and the guys who hired us is that machinery dealer right and so those two guys were here they were fixing the excavator touching some final uh touching up some spots you know and they were okay i gave them uh, my bill of lading everything was good and then they disappeared and i thought they were they were employees of this company because of my paperwork the shipper is actually the towing company but it turns out it's just for them to tell me to come here instead of their machinery yard right and so yeah these guys i don't know how they i said who brought this in what kind of a truck how many axles and the guy says yeah i think he had nine axles as well like i'm telling you so basically we tried everything and uh, the people started screaming some guy was uh, filming a video some black guy was look at this dumbass he has no clue what he's doing he was filming me because i got stuck and of course i have a jeep now to go back with the jeep i don't know if you guys realize it. it's like a b train right they say okay go back i said guys first off my stinger self steers i cannot just back with the stinger at an angle secondly i got a, I got the jeep why did you come here you know you're blocking the road and then cops showed up but cops were busy uh, by, by the way this is this area here where this guy walking that's this whole uh where the guy is right now this whole area all the way to the corner was bum territory and so i stopped there because there's there's a gate here 
yeah right like behind me like a hundred feet there's a gate and so I stopped here on the side in the morning because I wasn't sure which gate they want me to go to but I was concerned it's like very narrow you know even for my eight uh, eight axle rig uh, with the Jeep on the deck but man this was a nightmare but basically what we had to do was I, I, I dropped the air from the Jeep and then uh, they brought uh, like a small wrecker and I drained the air from the stinger and then they lifted the sting a little bit and I dragged it sideways until it was straight and then I put those blocks down right so now I was able to back and then I had to do like this 20 times so that my Jeep is uh, going straight back. You know, it was a nightmare, man. I'm, I'm all sweaty now. And we, we needed like this much, like the tracks of the excavator. We're trying to hit, I uh, see like this, uh, this pole. See like there's a wheel there? So that rolling gate and there's a pole. And that's what it was hitting. It was trying to hit this pole. And the pole is, uh, it has cement or concrete at the bottom and and finally what they did is they dismantled the rolling gate they took the connections at the bottom and they were able to move it away and so they gave us like four inches and then i said okay guys i have an idea let's uh, get your small wrecker back and let's just drag the stinger make more angle right and so they dragged this thing i i released the air again they dragged they lifted the sting a little bit and they dragged it to create like a maximum angle so it, it pushes the trailer this way because i was turning left right and then finally what they did they hooked up the wrecker and i said okay hook up your chain because i also had that idea but they they voiced that one first so we hooked up the cable and the guy was holding it with his truck to prevent the stinger from turning from going straight so we wanted the stinger to be like this you know pointed this way so that it turns the man that's probably like the worst experience i ever had but with this jeep and that's why with the jeep and stinger you got to be very very careful you know uh where you go in and that's why i stopped here right but usually the shipper knows or usually they tell you oh we got trucks like this here all the time don't worry about it and then when you're stuck they say well the other day 20 guys made it over here i'm not sure why you're having trouble but anyway I made it, uh, no damage to the trailer, no damage to the truck. And then the guy had a cra crazy idea. He has like a 70 ton, what they call a rotator, 70 ton wrecker. He says, um, we can pick up your trailer and move it sideways. I said, sorry guys, no, you're not doing that. I said, this is my trailer. It's an expensive trailer. Well, you cannot block the traffic. You know, they put you into this situation where like, but anyway, so we backed, uh, and, and yeah, so what happened, I was able to back in after they 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 uh, put this thing straight and I blocked it, so I backed all the way and they moved some, like there was a building here, and they moved some cars away from there, so I was able to come uh, real close to the building before making the turn, so that gave me a, a, a wider radius, and then finally, the final thought was, because again, you see it helps when you have a, modular trailer where each axle has independent air suspension so it just occurred to me man i should have done it earlier so i increased the pressure on the stinger so that it was turning right and i took the air out from axle three right i have a tandem my trailer is only tandem right then i have a flip axle and then i have a stinger and so what i did i raised the front of the trailer to put more pressure on the back and then i drained air on axle three and i increased pressure on the stinger and this way of course it's overloaded but you know what the heck nobody cares about that one you're doing like half a mile an hour and then on the way out yeah you see this guy that's the owner like that's his truck man has a tried him in the back and that whole thing rotates he can use it like he can take the boom like this he can go like this like this that's why they call him rotator so this guy, that's one of those trucks that uh, they, they call to, you know, big racks where there's a truck in the ditch. So he, this guy can do anything. So he wanted to move my trailer with that. And then he asked me, he says, uh, what's your weight? I said, empty or gross? He says, right now, gross. I said, 74 and 95. My empty setup is 74,000 plus 95 for this. And he says, yeah. We wouldn't be able to lift it with one rotator we need two and i said guys come on nobody's lifting anything let's just give me a bit more time 
And so we keep doing this, shuffling and shuffling. And the other guy was, I said, watch my right tire. I said, I wanna, I don't wanna rub against the curb, but I wanna be like half an inch away because you know, sometimes like when you sit like this, sometimes you don't realize that your, your front tire is like one foot away. I can use every single inch of that space. So I think today, like screw this, it's already two o'clock and I need to do two hours. You see, I'm gonna shut down at four and I'm all wetty and I, I did I eat anything? I think, I think I had some nuts in the morning. But right now I'm just going to this little truck stop over here. Uh, yeah, we're going on uh, 95, 95, 95 and there'll be a truck stop in there. So right now, I just need to turn right over there and then that's Washington Avenue and wait a second how do I go on Washington I need to catch I-15 what is this MMLK Boulevard I don't think that's how they want me to go I think I gotta take this. Like there's a there's an entrance. Hold on one second. All right, let's see over here. Um, see, A Street, Washington Avenue, I-15. Yeah, I'm not taking any any BS cross streets over here. I have to get to right to I-15, and there's a ramp right here. Yeah. So it's a good thing that I checked. All right, so let's get going. Just want to get the heck, the heck out of here before rush hour traffic starts. So, man. And of course, you know, who's at fault? The trucker. And that black guy is not helping with the camera, with the, with the phone. Look at this dumbass. <laughs> and then I see cops from there, right? I'm, I'm, I'm running back and forth. To check on the sting and back to the truck back uh, but it turns out the cops showed up they were they were hassling these uh, bombs they clean up all the bombs and of course half an hour later you have them again like over there at the uh, at the at the corner all right let's go i got a bunch of flags i check my chains everything is good yeah, and I think it helped that I also, I, I took the air out of the Jeep. Because of course, if you have the air, then the Jeep is gonna try to cut sharper. So I did everything I could in order to make the radius wider, as wide as possible. Okay, you see, all these guys over here, that's where they lived. They, they lived on this sidewalk over here. see a sign 15 south right because that's where I'm going I'm going I'm going 15 south yeah and then 95 yeah
take this bridge. I mean, go here. And then there's two lanes turning left. Oh, check this out. My car. Charger, but yeah, bye. No money. I like the turn signals, you know, on the charger. Man, I feel I miss my car. Now let's see. Yeah, oh, it's the same one like mine because it has a uh, uh, what do you call it? That uh, package, Daytona package. So yeah, it's a huge company. I see. They all moved here. So I mean. <laughs> And oh man, check this out. These guys are like, they're like virus. They have their own tents in there, bikes. I saw one guy had a couple of, um, uh, you know, those uh, chairs for disabled. Yeah, I see, that's my route. Washington, this is Washington. And now we're taking 95. Son of a... I need 410 ratio. Like, I tried to start in one. In, one, in first gear, it, there's a slight uphill over here, doesn't wanna go. So now we're gonna go low high. Like low by itself is too slow. So I can flip the switch and to go into uh, kind of like low two. But it's just ridiculous. First gear and it, it's not working. Oh check it, check it. <laughs> Have you seen that guy? There's a uh, turn signal over there red and this guy just oh because there's a bunch of cars behind me yeah 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 well once I'm on the freeway I can I can breathe out easy hey it's the same company see they all like this they blue and white it's called uh, Ewing Ewing Brothers I asked him I said how do you say your name I, I, I thought it was like Ewing Oh, you see, in, in one high, in uh, low high, that's okay. crazy routes I'm growing straight and then I'm taking 95 relax maybe there's no connection but I, th I see a ramp what the heck Maybe this is a new ramp and the Google Maps doesn't does not know that it's still it's it's already here. Yeah, 95 North. Oh man. Maybe it 
that's why because I cannot turn in there figure on the permit 95 no, uh, 15 south to 95 north how is that possible to see the downtown right so that's the most important thing and how, how do we turn around I'm gonna kill you miss Google if you if you screw me up over here how many lanes left okay two lanes all right Bridge is 14-2. That's another thing. Okay, and what's after that? After that we go, all right, after that there's, uh, yeah, there's a ramp to 95 South. Two. Are these? They're crazy. It's like 16 two over there. <laughs> like seriously, I have like freaking three feet above the boom. But yeah, this is good. You see, like when you have two lanes turning, that's a win-win. Like I know that. Oh, that's where it is. Sorry about that, go, uh, folks. Uh, I see the yellow sign says 14 to 400 feet. It's the railroad. There's a railroad bridge in there. Oh yeah, yeah, because I got scared a little bit. Eh. All right, Google, please get me on 95. As soon as I get there, I would feel so much better. I just get to get off these streets.
orders today? Or is that the only one? Alright, 95 north, two right lanes. Yes! Yeah, so some days are like this, just nuts. You cannot get out of the gate, then you cannot get your highway entrance because the permit agency has no freaking clue what they're doing. check in you cannot leave <laughs> Hotel California and we are in a traffic jam somewhat well at least this is it I'm on the right highway now 95 so remember, that's what I said, so the, because of the uh, construction in Eli, Nevada on US 93, they are sending me on this humongous detour, and then I end up back in uh, Wells, Nevada on US 93. But I like that little town, because I still remember there's a huge dirt lot there for trucks, for you like, you can low, you can get into that lot with a 120 foot long rig. transmission that's how it's done at the end of a long day well the good news is that the temperature went down two degrees so now it's only 29 C we get out of out of this развратное место corrupt gaming capital I'm not sure why I said that um, I don't feel that way at all I like
like Las Vegas. I like the, um, I took that tour, you know, on the bus. Uh, it was cool. Uh, through downtown, but the only problem was uh, I didn't want to go during the like early afternoon because I know it's gonna be very hot and the bus had the uh, open deck and so uh, I went at five o'clock but it was still very hot Six kilometers. We're turning right on north on 95, and I think after that it should be a bit easier. Washington was uh, pretty wide and then the turn was okay so many lanes turning left I was afraid you know I thought it would be like an overpass like you know some places you go you take the exit then you go on the overpass over the freeway and um, setups like that they can have uh, they can have pretty sharp turns because it's too hot not to, to use the AC and because of this hill kilometers an hour. Wow. 
93, 94, 95 km an hour. Man, I better slow down because I'm just gonna blow right past that truck stop where I'm going. <laughs> With a 95,000 pound excavator. Man. People on the right are afraid to pass me because the track sticks out. But I don't know, they have like 10 foot wide shoulder. Just go on the shoulder. There's no cops, right? Don't be a chicken. Five kilometers, five clicks to uh, next uh, instruction where Google will say keep left. And then I see a big bypass around Las Vegas. I think once we over that one, then it should be, I should be able to breathe easier. You can see on the level, actually we're doing 60 miles an hour, 97 clicks an hour. The truck is doing good. I have zero restriction on the fuel filter. And remember, we are running with 10 micron fuel filters now. But in the summer it's okay. But I'm curious to see what's going to happen in winter. When I start using all that uh, bad fuel. Ford Explorer, or oh, that's the new one, the uh, the new model. They keep changing the lights in the front and rear. But you see, it helps that I have three flags, right? I, I have three flags on each track, on each side. So instead of like your regular a flag in each corner, right? That's what they want, like four flags. I have three on each track. Then I have two flags on the radiator and I have two flags on the stinger. And of course I have flashing lights because you know it's 12 feet wide. Um, up some kind of weird looking house <laughs> the roof is falling in but that doesn't matter because I found parking ladies and gentlemen uh, of course this was listed on uh, tracker path and I checked the uh, satellite image you know now nowadays they provide a satellite image and I knew that there was this big area like that's the truck stop building and I like this area even though it says 20 trucks but you know I was able to pull in no backing and now tomorrow I'm gonna turn here where those trucks are and just go around that uh, big sign and I have to go this way that's uh, 95 north and keep going 
towards uh, I-80. So that's it, a very long day, but mission accomplished, I got loaded and um, made some people a bit unhappy today because I blocked traffic, but stuff happens, right? Eventually traffic jam was cleared and everybody went on their own happy merry way. Thanks for watching.